Welcome to the watch party for the Stratford Festival 2015 production of The Adventures of Pericles. My name is Scott Wentworth. I directed the production and joining me are the two stars of the production and two of my favorite actors, Evan Buehling and Deborah Hay. Hi guys. Hi. Hey. I am both delighted and have been looking forward to this conversation, but frankly, I'm, I'm also a little nervous about it. This is, I think, the first time that I've ever in any way kind of formally had a conversation with actors who had been in a play I've directed. <laughs> For those of, of, of you in the viewing audience who did not see the stage production or haven't seen the film yet, Pericles, a late play by, by Shakespeare, probably written in collaboration with uh, another. Uh, scholars tell us that this was probably a, a writer named George Wilkins, who published a novella called The Painful Adventures of Pericles, um, which is where we get our title, The Adventures of Pericles. On its narrative surface, it is both a traditional hero quest, um, but it is also kind of a critique of that hero quest and um, what we might call in modern parlance a deconstruction of that hero quest. At the beginning of the play, uh, Pericles, uh, Prince of Tyre, uh, his father has just died. Uh, so we meet him at a, at a point where, where culturally uh, uh, his, he is being, you know, kind of at a point where he has to assume uh, command of, 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 of his kingdom, uh, move into manhood. Um, and so he has, he has traveled to a foreign land, the city of Antioch, where there is a princess who, if you solve a riddle, you get to marry her and live happily ever after. Um, that doesn't work out for Pericles because when he arrives there, he discovers that the princess, his father, uh, has been sexually abusing her. And rather than slay the monster and save the princess, uh, he runs away. So it's, it's, a, it's quite an interesting introduction to, uh, to our titled character. So I wanted to, to, to pose the first question to you, Evan. What was it like, you know, from the inside, uh, that particular beginning of, of, of the play? How did you begin to navigate it in rehearsal? What was it like uh, in performance, kind of encountering the story at that point? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks for, for having me on. It's wonderful to see both of you. Um, I, it was quite moving, actually, to see you both. I know. It's like, it, I know. Was, it was certainly one of my most uh, rewarding experiences at Stratford doing this show. Absolutely, hands down. And I also want to congratulate Stratford on, on, on their uh, progressive movement that they're involved in right now with Black Lives Matter and, and the Indigenous folks at the table right now. So congrats to that as well. About about Pericles and, and that um, uh, ex experience, uh, it was it was. I remember calling you, Scott, somewhere around the three quarters of the way through rehearsal. <laughs> I just, I I'd realized I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and I called you. I was like, I I know that you're putting this thing together, and I promise you, at some point, I'll I'll pop up through it with something, with with some sort of decision or some sort of character realization. Um, and and I think and I think we found it. And I think I think uh, the the beautiful thing about about this play and what I love about Shakespeare's characters is that there are is that there is dimension, right? There's there's dimension. And as soon as you step into any of these characters with the idea that you know Petruchio is a man and you know Brutus is grumpy and all that kind of stuff, it's, you you sort of you sort of uh, uh, do yourself a disservice as an actor and the audience. So I think what we found was was a uh, uh, a, a human that was afraid, you know, and and didn't know didn't know what he was doing, and, and I think I think there, there, I think there's something beautiful about that and and very human, um, that that I think we were able to uh, mine. Uh, so it, we, we, and and you know being given the gracious space that you afforded us, Scott, in both your translation or your adaptation and and your direction, it was. Uh, we were able to do that. So it was a perfect storm of, of great people and Deb and the rest of the cast. It was just Yes, it, it, it really was. And, and, and just to echo what you were saying earlier, I, I, 
number this experience as 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 one of the greatest I've had in 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 the theater, both as as an actor and as a director. Uh, it was it was such a pleasure to explore this play. Um, it's it's a troublesome play in that the the original text that we have is is a bit of a mess. Um, if you go to a bookstore and buy a copy of it, each uh, uh, if you buy the Arden, it, it's a very different version than if you buy the Oxford. Uh, it has to be sort of reconstructed because it's 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 very messy, and 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 so each each production in a way is an adaptation, uh, and it and and so therefore it can kind of speak very directly to the group of people who are both putting it on and the group of people who have been assembled to watch it. Um, you know, one of the interesting things to me about the play as well is, is it is also overtly allegorical. It says so right at the beginning. This, this, this is a story. This is an old story. You've heard it before, the narrator tells us. Um, and people use it as a restorative. So one of the things that we tried to do in, in, in the production was to turn this kind of linear narrative story that kind of moves this way across the horizon into kind of a series of circles. Um, to emphasize the the ritual aspect of it, and and uh, Deborah, in in many ways, you you as uh, kind of led the charge, I think that way for the audience trying to understand that, because you, uh, uh, I mean, most Shakespeare plays, of course, uh, require doubling. Uh, if if every speaking part in Pericles was assigned to an individual actor, we would have had a cast of probably fifty or sixty people. Um, but you, uh, uh, Deb, played the daughter of, of Antiochus, the poor unnamed daughter, um, who is the victim of this sexual abuse by her father. You also played Thaisa, who Pericles eventually marries, and their daughter, Marina. In a way, all of, all of the women that, uh, that, that Pericles encounters uh, in his life. What was that like? Was it, was it helpful? Was it, was it an obstacle that had to be overcome? Did it not matter at all in your exploration and your playing of, of, of these parts and indeed that one part because they're all in your body? I remember when we, before we started and you and I were talking about, about this vision and, uh, and you talked a lot about um, the idea of the goddess and um, that that the, the sort of tragic reality um, of Pericles, that, that we were going to look at that journey as a, on a kind of mythic level, that the healing would take place on a mythic level. And, and that the goddess Diana was kind of the face of that. And so that each of these daughters, because it really seems to me in, in many ways to be more a father-daughter play than there is the secondary relationship of Thaisa and Pericles, but it's it's a love relationship and a husband-wife relationship, but it's very short-lived. So it's it the the sort of <laughs> theme, not to give anything away, um, <laughs> but but the theme of father-daughter. We first meet Antiochus's daughter, and that relationship. Pericles is confronted with that, and then. Thaisa and Simonides, their relationship, Pericles is confronted with that. And then Pericles meets his own daughter, Marina. And, and so that each of those women, I seem to remember, it's been a while, but that I was the goddess Diana taking on different forms, like covering my face gently with different veils, mm -hmm. but that underneath each of these daughters was the same uh, goddess. And, and I remember us talking about, at first I was like, how does we spoke about the fact that gods often come down and reveal themselves uh, on on earth in in myth in different forms like I was thinking of um, in the Odyssey when I think it's Athena comes yes. right and and she appears to Telemachus like to get rid of the suitors or something and mm -hmm. so I remember going into it with that in my mind that. That, that I could always ground myself in that. And also that the transformation from character to character, you know, I remember at first going, well, is there gonna be like this great sort of like, you know, fireworks and boom, and how did they do that? Now she's a completely different character. And you said, no, it's going to be completely revelatory. Like that nothing will be hidden so that we see the transformation is as seamless as now I'm Marina and now I'm, and now I'm Thaisa, and now, you know. Yes. 
So that really helped me, that conversation that we had. It helped me embrace the, 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 the sort of magical element of the play, which is so, it really is, it's a folk, it's a folk tale or a myth. It's, it goes beyond the everyday. And there's, it's quite fantastical, so much of the play. I mean, sometimes yep. almost yep. in a comical way. Well, so sometimes, sometimes it does manifest as comedy, doesn't it? I mean, that was one of the yeah. discoveries, yep. watching uh, the actors, uh, principally uh, you two, explore this world that 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 I had been busy putting together with the designers. Um, I wasn't aware as I was doing that, partly because I guess I was taking it very seriously. And I, I you know, there's a reason that Wilkins called it the painful adventures. I find it an incredibly painful story. Um, but what you guys, uh, one of the many things that you guys brought to it for me watching was was that there was also that sense of play and 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 actual humor that is all over myths and fairy tales, um, um, which which was also a, a great gift to the uh, uh, to the production. Picking up on 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 what you're talking about, Deb. I mean, I think this play more than any other, even more than Henry V, constantly reminds the audience that they're watching a play. You know, it starts, the first line of the play is to sing a song that old was sung. Um, the, 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 um, the action is stopped, uh, not constantly, but a great deal by narration. Things that in other events, that in other plays, Shakespeare would have dramatized are told to the audience. Uh, uh, in the original text, they're described as tableaus, so they almost remind us of those um, those masks that Inigo Jones might might design for for the court. Um, songs are called for, dances are called for. Um, so the play seems to, to to go out of its way to remind the audience that they are indeed an audience watching a story. Um, was that? Was that something that had that had to be navigated uh, 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 on the inside when you were enacting it? Was did, did did one, you know, do you did they help you or hinder you? Those 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 sort of meta theatrics. Did they did they inform your performance or or did they have no effect on it at all? But Evan, what do you think? Because you were you were probably in a way more of the of the recipient of that. That you were constantly as Pericles watching your past history repeat itself. You know the fact that 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 Wayne and Deb reappeared uh, not as Antiochus and Antiochus' daughter, but as Simonides and Simonides' daughter. That 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 said, although this is a friendlier court and a nicer court, that it was enacting the same myth that 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 men have the ability to give their daughters to other men. Um, but did that did that affect the playing at all? Did it did it get in your way? Was it helpful that aspect of the play? Um, I kind of enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed coming out and there, there was something not terribly linear about it. And there, there is with that play, any, any time I've seen it, I'm like always just kind of, you're a bit baffled by world to world to world. And, and, and so I think what you did was you, you sort of, you, you, you made it more about the allegorical nature of the piece, I think, than than just sort of like a, a fairy tale and just sort of like a, a, a story, like it wasn't Hamlet. It was sort of like, come and sit and watch this and you will experience what this means to your own life. Yes, and yes. I, and I think, I think that was quite beautiful. Like it was, it was almost like, and I don't wanna say a lesson because it's not, you know, it's not, you weren't like hammering anyone over the head. But I, I, I felt that when I saw it, cause I saw Ben Carlson at Chicago Shakes the year before play Pericles and and I stole a bunch from him because why wouldn't you steal from Ben Carlson um, but I remember that that same thing walking away from it going wow this is different you know whereas I walk away from Hamlet or I walk away from Henry V and I go I'm not sure what I like I'm not sure what I've walked away with I've walked away with a story whereas Pericles I, I walk away with a bit a little bit more understanding of what it is to be human so mm -hmm. in that regard I, w one little thing that's interesting about the history of Pericles is that the Pericles is always get sick and they always got a lung infection this is coming from from the coaching staff johnny goad got one uh -huh. Jeremy davies got one and i got pneumonia playing pericles and because grief settles in the lungs and there's so much grief in that play that you know halfway through the season i got pneumonia it's strange but like all, all the other pericles got 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 the same thing
That's extraordinary. That's so extraordinary. A warning to future Pericles. Exactly. Pericles. Pneumonia is, and pneumonia is also um, such a watery illness. Mm. That's right. You're so That's tempest right. tossed and you're always at sea and being, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Deb, was there anything about about the 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 uh, the meta theatricals, for lack of a better term, that you, that that helped you navigate this, this 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 course? I mean, you know, for instance, you played your own statue at at your uh, at your alleged uh, uh, death of Marina. Yeah. Um, you got to you got to uh, uh, embody the actual words of the riddle. That in the text yeah. are, are are given to Pericles, you know, just you know to read uh, a note. So you know, kind of taking on uh, both the words and 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 the manifestation of some of, of some of these these you know uh, larger images in in play was 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 that something that that empowered you, or did it was just one other thing you had to do? No, no, it certainly wasn't that. <laughs> I, it was that's a drag every night when I had to stand there as a statue. That's right. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I think because it is a nonlinear piece and, and, and there is so much, it, I don't want to use the word absurd, but it's, it's nonlinear to the degree that it's like, now we're, now we're over here and imagine this and that there's such a sense of um, almost make believe to it that that because, because we say it is, it is. You know, the way children play, uh, it felt like that. Like, now I'm this, you know, and now you be this. And, <laughs> you know, we create the scene and then it's just there. It is what, what we say it is. And we've been watching, you know, the entire company. As I said, you, you were sort of leading that with, with, with your doublings, but we saw it throughout the company where, where various actors and actresses would, would just reinvent who they were without not, you know, and as you say, you know, people weren't disguised, there weren't beards and funny wigs, so we wouldn't know who was playing who. So we saw a series of transformations that then uh, I think in a way perhaps prepared us or hopefully prepared us for these kind of transformations that you're talking about where, where you, you endow someone through your words and they become what, what you say. You know, which, which actually does lead me to, to an interesting aspect of the play. It, it almost divides in half, not unlike The Winter's Tale, where the first half is very much The Adventures of Pericles, and the second half is very much The Adventures of Marina. Mm. Uh, and, and the contrast between the two uh, hero journeys is, is profound. Uh, 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 Pericles is, is almost exclusively manifested in action, and, and a lot of his language is um, in soliloquy. Uh, uh, Marina, uh, very little of, of her action is, is physical action. She has denied that. Um, you know, she's been captured and sold into uh, the sex trade. She has very little agency except her, her, her words and her imagination. Um, and consequently, she has very few soliloquies. I think you only had three or four lines here and there. Um, but all your, all your words were, were, were directed outward at, at people and that, and that became your action. So it was also very interesting to watch the different um, versions of, of, of the hero journey. And of course, the, the, the great scene, um, the reuniting of Pericles with, with Myth Marina is, is you know, one of, if not the climax of, of, of the play. What, what was it like exploring it and, and, and eventually encountering it every, every night? Uh, you want to start off, Evan? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's... But you've been away for a while, right? I mean, Pericles has, has we've only seen you in Act, in act Two, in Part Two, uh, in, in kind of tableau. Yeah. So, so, so when, when, when we see you, a lot has changed since we, we encountered that. Well, story. yeah, it's, as you said, it's, it's, more, it's Marina's story in the second half, right? Until it sort of ties, everything ties back together. Yeah. Right, at the end. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what the, what the morality or what the, what the lesson we're supposed to learn at the end is. Just like throw yourself in a bed and give up and everything, everything will work out. <laughs> 
Hey, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think, I think you hit on something that, you know, the world, since we've done Pericles, since we did Pericles, the world has changed incredibly. Yes. And it continues like, to change now, hour by hour. It continues to change, 878 degrees, you know, like it's from me too, from everything, right? And, and I think if we went back on this play, after everything that's changed, we might have a different lens on it. I certainly, I certainly would. My eyes have been open to a lot. I mean, everyone's has, right? Yeah. Especially in the arts world, that's our, that's our job. So I, I mean, to break it down to sort of like the, the, the essence of a, as, as Deb so beautifully said about father and, and daughter, it's probably Shakespeare writing about his, his, his inability to have a relationship with his daughters mm -hmm. at the time, right? He didn't, you know, well, for whatever reason, um, you know, it's, 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 it's why he's writing it. What felt, what felt comfortable and what felt foreign about this play? Because this play, I think this play is kind of unique in the canon. It doesn't behave like the other plays completely. Was, was there a sense uh, as you were working on it where you went, this doesn't feel familiar. Oh, this feels familiar. Or, did, mm. you know, did anything remind you of, 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 of other work that you've done and were you informed by that? It felt, it felt quite unique to me, like it, and, and also, um, it felt like the least clunky, uh, thing that I've flowed inside for, for, for a long time, like that there was a momentum to the piece and, and a sort of a current to the piece that we, we started it and I keep thinking of water, but it's just such oh. a liquid piece and, it's a water and, play, quite, quite. A water quite play, play, yeah. And and then and and then it it culminated in that final scene, uh, father daughter scene with with Evan, which every time for me felt like a cool, still pool of water. Like it was just after all of the current, it just was like oh, it was so. So you just to go back to that question, it it I loved doing it every. It felt like such a reward. Was there, was there a difference, um, did you notice from, from through the performance of it, uh, uh, from when you opened to when you closed, uh, that, that, that changed for you either subtly or, 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 in, you know, or profoundly? Yeah, I think, it, I think it did evolve a bit, but I, I think we also found, well, I, I, I felt like I found a groove with it. There's, when it, I've watched it again, and since then I've, I've gone, ah. There, you know, you start to go, there's things I, I would have loved to have yeah. adjusted or, or done differently, but, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. both the curse and the blessing of, 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 of recording. <laughs> yeah, right. Of course, yeah. course right. you go back and you go, well, that was pretty good. And yeah. then you look at other things and you go like, oh, see, now I understand. Now, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I mean, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. Acid trip or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned, you know, like, the, if we were to go back into rehearsal now, um, one of the, th one of the things that I'm aware of and, 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 you know, Deb alluded to this earlier, the almost fantastical nature of events in this play, you know, uh, I remember, you know, you, you used to get a, a laugh from, of recognition from the audience, uh, uh, Deb, when, when you were recounting in that very emotional scene, your history to Pericles. And when you got to the part where then, where then pirates kidnapped me, it was, it was, <laughs> It was this beautiful laugh of release because the audience was like, oh, right, this, this was almost an absurd series of events where it played upon a stage would be dismissed as an improbable fiction. And yet yeah. I feel like we are living through, a, through a, a, a time of events now that are so unprecedented and so, uh, had we, had we, we couldn't have predicted them even three or four months no. ago, how profoundly the world is changing. So, so you know, there's a part of me that, th that, that, that is thinking, the parts of Pericles that, that five years ago I thought were sort of extreme and, and, and crazy kind of aren't. <laughs> the parts that, that, that were funny or more serious, the parts that were serious might have more, more humor in, in them. It, 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 like that image of the water moving and, and sometimes it's storming and sometimes it's calm, uh, but there is always a current, there's always movement, it's always, it's always alive, so mm -hmm. the play does keep, keep talking mm -hmm. to us. Um, if there was one question you could ask Shakespeare about this play, what, what, what would it be? Oh. Where's the original copy? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's the one thing I noticed is when, when, you're, when you're doing the show, when it switches, when it switches from Shakespeare to, um, what's his name? Uh, Wilkins. Uh, Wilkins. Yeah. Uh, Talk about that. That's, that's, that's interesting. Did, how did it feel? In order to make those soliloquies that clearly weren't written by Shakespeare um, work, uh, I think it required a different uh, sense. Like, whereas Shakespeare sort of gives you exactly where you need to go in terms of arguments and in terms of in terms of uh, what what we're trying to set up with this speech, the Wilkins ones you kind of had to go. Uh, I don't. I don't really know what I'm getting to, but it, it, it was almost like a more modern sensibility in 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 his writing, which wasn't a bad thing, which I which I quite enjoyed in in some some of the other things because it allowed me to um, explore the 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 cowardice or something of of, of the oh, character. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, I mean, one of the things that 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 I was so struck by was especially in performance was was how much i liked the writing that everyone agreed wasn't shakespeare mm -hmm. um, uh, the fisherman scene was everybody agrees that that's a, that's a wilkins scene and i love that scene the humanity of those three fishermen and their relationship when they find pericles is beautiful the brothel scenes were apparently all wilkins uh, he was apparently a brothel keeper so there was a, there was a reality perhaps to those scenes that that uh, that Shakespeare would have to imagine when he wrote uh, scenes that took place in the sex trade, um, and we certainly pushed that in our production. But 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 I I feel like it was based on what was actually written there. There was nothing kind of wenchy or saucy about those scenes. They were you know these were sex workers and this was a job and and they had to deal with disease and death all all the time. So it, it, I, 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 I know what you're saying, Evan, that, that, that when it felt more modern, there, there was a kind of gritty realism to those scenes that, that is sometimes not available in, in, in Shakespeare because one is always kind of in his imaginative world. So there, there's a, a reality to the human heart, but not necessarily the kind of streets of London reality that you get from some other writers. Absolutely. You know, so many images in the play strike me of uh, uh, images of rebirth and 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 transformation. Uh, the play calls uh, the story a restorative that 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 somehow the retelling of 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 this story um, is uh, medicinal in some way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a kind of human medicine. Yeah, absolutely. I think it also, I think, you know, at the time it would have been to, to it, in, in the opposite, having the opposite effect that Romeo and Juliet might have, where it's love lost and love's gone and dead and so is everyone else on the stage. This is, this is giving, this is giving the audience in Shakespeare's time, which was, you know, awful, <laughs> like hope and giving them mm -hmm. Giving, giving them like I, I I I don't know that I've ever really cried in a Shakespeare before like in watching one uh, I probably have but like as 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 profoundly as I did watching it in Chicago uh, during during the 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 scene between Pericles and his daughter at the end because it just it it speaks to all of us so the, the the sense of um you know all is not lost and. Mm. Uh, yeah, and in, in that regard, it's uh, that's that's the beautiful thing about his the, the later plays, the, as Joe Ziegler calls them, the forgiveness plays, which I really like. Yes, I want to thank uh, Evan Buehling and Deborah Hay for for joining me in this in this conversation. Um, it is not only great to see their faces because I miss them, um, but it's wonderful to hear your insights into uh, what it was uh, like putting uh, this production together through your performances. Um, I hope that it was uh, both entertaining and enlightening to, to our audience. Uh, I know I'm looking forward to uh, reviewing uh, The Adventures of Pericles tonight, uh, and I hope you all are too. Uh, stay safe, Dev and, and, and Evan, uh, till we meet again. It's great to see you, and um, enjoy The uh, Adventures of Pericles.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Stratford Festival on Film viewing party for our 2015 production of Pericles, directed by Scott Wentworth. My name is Anthony Cimolino. I'm the artistic director of the Stratford Festival. Pericles is one of Shakespeare's late plays, a romance. It tells an epic, action-packed story of danger, narrow escapes, heartbreaking loss, and then tender reunion. It takes us to a variety of exotic locales, but its hero's journey is also one of spiritual self-discovery. As always, we will have lots of additional programming around this beautiful film, starting tomorrow on Friday, June 26th, in our In Conversation series, you can see me talking with Sir Stanley Wells, Honorary President of the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, and also the general editor of both the Oxford and Penguin editions of Shakespeare, and Paul Edmondson, author, co-author, co-editor of many books on Shakespeare, and also a poet of his own collection of Shakespeare-related poems. And then on Saturday at 10 a.m., we'll have our virtual Meet the Festival, a chance to meet the cast of Pericles and ask them questions. And watch out, too, for our episode of In Good Company, in which Grant Wynne Davies interviews Richard Azunian. Richard was a longtime critic for the Toronto Star, but he was also a director who directed in 1986 a Stratford Festival production on our main stage of Pericles. And who was Pericles? None other than Grant Wynne Davies. If you're just joining us now, you've missed our pre-show introduction in which the director of uh, tonight's production, Scott Wentworth, spoke to Evan Buling, who played Pericles, and Deb Hay, who plays Thaisa and Marina. But don't worry, you'll be able to still catch that online here for a number of weeks. And after tonight, The Adventures of Pericles will be available online for the next three weeks. Next week at this time, we'll have a new film for you, our 2014 production of Antony and Cleopatra, directed by Gary Griffin. And meanwhile, don't forget that our brand new film of William Shakespeare's The Merry Wives of Windsor is available for rent or purchase at the Cineplex store online. Finally, as a reminder, as you watch tonight's film, if you're having any problems with the video, you can usually resolve those problems by refreshing your screen or adjusting the resolution. For details, see Film Festival FAQs at the bottom of our homepage, stratfordfestival.ca. And now, let's embark on a journey of a lifetime as we follow our hero as he travels across the ancient world in the adventures of Pericles. <laughs> 